So welcome to the afternoon session of our two-day workshop. So the next speaker is uh, Julie uh, Kim Zajons from uh, the uh, Physical Review Applied. Please, uh, Julie. Thank you very much, Tommaso. Um, thank you for coming back. I have to say I'm quite impressed that so many people came back. If it were me, I would be s still sitting outside. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so as Tommaso said, I am um, the managing editor of Physical Review Applied. And I'm going to do a little bit something different. This is really about uh, the APS, the Physical Review Journals, and, and, uh, and, and about Physical Review Applied. I know that not all of you are in the publishing world in physics. So uh, if you have any questions, if anything's unclear, just stop me. And if I speak too fast, stop me. You know, feel free. So um, Lance this morning gave us a really nice, you know, overview of how to write a, a good paper, and one of it is his title. And um, I came out with this title at 3 o'clock in the morning when I was in Helsinki. And then when I put this talk together, I thought to myself, oh my god, this is a terrible title. Uh, here, you know, I am an editor, and uh, I really don't like this title. So I had to come up with something very quick. So it's now this. Uh, something shorter, more to the point. So um, I had two different lives before I am what I am right now. Um, I used to be a high-pressure physicist, and uh, then I went to work for Fisrev B, and I worked for Fisrev B for about 13 years. Um, and then physical, uh, the physical review started, physical review applied, and so I was tapped to run it, and so that's what I've been doing for um, five years, almost five years now. So as Lawrence mentioned, uh, the editorial offices are in Ridge, New York. A lot of people ask me, where is Ridge? Um, it's not exactly a, a well-known place. Oh, sorry, I'll do the outline first. Maybe I should know my slides better. So, the physical review journals. Where we are, who we are, and what we do. That's going to be what I'm going to tell you. And then uh, about physical review applied itself, uh, about who we are and where we fit into this family of journals, and uh, what we want, what kind of papers we want, and where we're going as a journal. So, where we are. This is where I was going to come with map of the United States. We're in New York, and uh, at the very tip of New York here um, is Long Island, and we're right here. And we're surrounded by a lot of great universities. Stony Brook is right next door. It's about 20 minutes from us. There's MIT uh, in Boston, and, and uh, here's Yale, Columbia University, NYU, and then uh, University of Maryland is down in DC. And that is actually where the seat of the American Physical Society is. They, they are the ones who publish the physical review journals. Um, but the membership and it's uh, all publications. Does this sound OK? Yeah. I feel like I'm spitting into it. Um, th but all the publications are done in, uh, in the Ridge offices. So the Ridge office is actually, um, the physical review was started before the APS, basically. APS took them over about 20 years after we had started, and it used to move around with um, the editor-in-chief. We were small enough that they would just move around. And the last editor-in-chief was at Brookhaven, and this is, this is Rick, the Heavy Iron Collider. This is where Brookhaven is, Upton. And um, we got too big, and Brookhaven got bigger, so we needed a new place. So what did we do? We just built something across the street. Um, this is now... I think we've expanded probably four times since uh, this is the newest iteration. We got this about five years ago, I think. Yeah, about five years ago. So that's where we are. Um, it's kind of rural. And when I first went to Brookhaven, I thought to myself, oh, I'm going to New York. And it's only like 50 miles from New York. It can't be that bad. Well, you see deer, you see turkey. And we have a very nice beach, although your beaches are really nice too. So we are certainly not in New York City. We're way out there somewhere. Um, so this is the interior. Um, I still like yours better. <laughs> we don't have nice plants in the middle. I like the plants in the middle, you know? But we do have a little atrium here. There's a little atrium. And my office is right there. This was actually not, wasn't planned this way. I <laughs> <laughs> Somebody gave me this picture. I'm like, oh, there's my office. Uh, yes, we have, we have glass doors. We actually have an open door policy. 
So um, unless we're on a telecon or you know you have a supervisory meeting or something like that, doors are always open. Yes, and a lot of the doors are glass. So no secrets, no secrets. So who are we? So we are basically we see ourselves as a, a publication run by physicists, for physicists, we're international, and we're run by the community. We're not for profit, so um, you know, all the, we try to keep the subscription costs as low as possible. Uh, and we're representative and comprehensive. And, uh, um, so that's kind of the word bubble we have here. And one of the things that I said, we, this year we were, um, trying to find the laser pointer here, uh, we, are celebrating our 125th anniversary. The first issue came out in 1893, uh, and APS took the FizRev over in 1913. Um, Lawrence has already shown this slide. And as you can tell, for the longest time, um, we didn't really have any new journals. The only new journal that came along was in 1958, which was PRL. The other journals, these were just split from the existing journals. And um, so it was A, B, C, and D in the 70s. And then in the 90s, uh, A got too big. So we split it into A and E. Um, I'll tell you, not everybody's familiar with the physical review. The next slide will tell you what all these letters mean. Um, then we had a couple of open access uh, journals. And then F physical review applied in 2014 was the first subscription journal APS had started uh, since uh, the last one, which was PRL. So we've grown into 13 journals over the past 125 years. Um, and this year, we actually had a number of uh, celebrations. It's the 60th anniversary of PRL, the 25th anniversary of PRE, the 20th anniversary of this is for, uh, Physical Review Accelerator and Beams. They are an, uh, an open access journal for Accelerator and Beams. And then we also have the 10th anniversary of Physics. Uh, physics is an online uh, magazine, and they were de they're designed to highlight um, all the uh, good, important, interesting papers that Physical Review um, publishes. So this is what I'm not just going to try and go through this very quickly, because a lot of you may not know. Um, OK, so PRL and PRX are the all of physics, PRX being the open access. Um, journal. Review of Modern Physics is al also all of physics, but it's the review journal. And then uh, we have A through E. Here you have Atomic Condensed Matter. That's where um, Lawrence is lead editor of Condensed Matter Material Physics, Nuclear Physics. Um, D is Particle and Fields and Gravitation. E is Statistical Nonlinear Dynamics. And then we decided we should probably name our journal something a little bit more in, you know, informative. So here we have Physics Applied Fluids and Materials is the newest one that we um, created. And these two are, as I said, the two open access journals that more, they used to be called special topics. Um, so they, they also have a physics education um, research journal. And then of course here are physics, which is not a, uh, n not a research journal. I keep on losing my, my uh, pointer here. So um, for the 125th anniversary, the editors uh, came together and they, um, decided to uh, pick out some papers and uh, events that were important to the history of the APS and of the physical review. Um, and they put together a timeline. For example, you know, they picked out the uh, 1969 experiment to probe the proton structure. Um, 1984 quasicrystals were discovered. These were all papers published in the physical review. Or, um, and then, of course, the LIGO paper, that was a P PRL, that was published in 2016. So we put this all together in this little, nice little poster, which I have, I don't usually use props, but here we are, we made this nice little poster. And you can see all the events. Um, some of them that I just talked about was, is highlighted here in red. And you can go here and uh, look on this website, and then you'll see this. And, and there's an interactive thing that you can move around and see what has happened over the years. So now, down to the nitty gritty. Um, the editorial offices. As I said, we're all located, all the journals are located in Ridge, New York. And our editor-in-chief is Michael Turnison. He was a nuclear physicist. 
um, at, the Michigan, at Michigan State University in Lansing. And in this uh, office, we have in-house editors uh, like me. I work full time. That's my job. Um, there are about 50 of us. Uh, the journals are run slightly differently. So uh, PRL, PRB, PRX, PR Applied, and PR Materials are run by in-house staff. We might have people who help us from um, the outside to be as associate editors, uh, but the bulk of the work is done in-house. And then there are ju some journals that are uh, run by remote editors who are mostly active researchers that do this on the side. Um, and there are about 80 of them. Um, and PR A, C, D, E, Fluids, and R and P are run that way. And then we have, of course, a lot of support and technical staff that help us out to do our job. And there are about 90 of them. So it's about 130 people in our building. Um, well, and we have 130 editors. This counts all the remotes, too. And we are international. Not only is our journals inter, um, international from readership and authorship, but also the editors. So these are all the countries that the different editors come from. So 34 different nations. Actually, not the United States. I would say that there were more. Um, we used to joke that in FISREV B, uh, out of the 10, there were only two that were Americans. All the rest of us were um, with two British, um, some as Indian, a Greek, uh, uh, oh, two Greeks, and um, one Nepalese. Uh, let me see if I got everybody. Yeah. At the editors, um, we have, PRX has a Brazilian editor, um, Alessandro. And Katusha is also from, uh, from Brazil. So out of the hundred and, I mean, and we also have associated, I'm not familiar with all of the associate editors um, of the other journals because some of them, you know, there are 80 of them. So, um, but in-house, we have at least two who are from uh, Brazil. So what do we do? So we manage a peer review process um, and the publication process. Um, we are going to go, we have a tutorial for uh, authors and referees later today. So I'm not, I, we're going to go through this a little bit more in detail. But just as an overview, you know, you're an author, you write the manuscript, you send it to the editor, and then it goes to, things happen in between, but we'll talk about that later. Um, we go to referees, and then the manuscript gets revised, and then it either gets accepted or rejected. And um, after this acceptance, that's where my job ends, so to say. And this goes to a production department in um, India, and they do all the composition and, and all these things that need to get done. And then we have this. You can tell my B PRB roots that I put PRB in there. <laughs> so, but just a small detour at this point. Um, our referees. I think our referees are uh, people. How many people have? Reviewed for us. <laughs> a, a few people. A few people. Well, thank you very much because this is, these are, without our referees, we live and die by, by our referees. So uh, it's very important to us. So thank you for your help and support. And it is, they are really crucial to, to the, the, the publication, pro to the peer review process uh, because the quality of the reports really tell us that raises the quality of, you know, the, the, the manuscripts. And uh, you help authors present their work in a better way so that it's understandable and, and it will have more impact. We have at the moment about 70,000 active referees in our database, and 29,000 of them were sent at least one referral last year. So we keep them busy. Uh, we are at times adding hundreds of new uh, referees per month, especially as we start these new journals, um, you know, we need to have a bigger pool of, of referees. Also, um, we, science is becoming larger and more interdisciplinary. So um, we do add a lot of referees. It's also to uh, make sure that the referee burden is not as uh, high um, over time. So he, what are the referees used? There we go. So this is all the referees that we have used for all the physical review journals in 2017. So. As you can see, Europe and U.S. and Canada are the two major bulk um, uh, reviewers. And um, we have 
with this one is actually separated out. Latin America is 1%, and we have 2% um, Brazilian uh, referees. And then as you can see, uh, Japan, China, Asia Pacific, India. And we're always trying to make this uh, more, you know, more diverse. So we, you know, as I said, in the, in the author uh, referee tutorial, we'll go a little bit more into how, what we do and how we need your help to uh, grow the referee pool. pool. So, sorry, Julie, may, may I ask mm -hmm. you a question about this picture, the previous? Yeah. previous picture. So uh, I would say that for Europe and Canada, also Brazil, unfortunately, it reflects the number of published papers per region, I would say. But for example, in, uh, if you consider the Asian number of publications, physical review, and the number yeah. of referees mm -hmm. from Asia, so there is a big discrepancy. Yes. Um, Can you comment on this? Or oh, have you ever thought about this kind of statistics? Oh yeah, we think about it all the time. And one of the biggest problems we have are the names. You know, um, do you know how many L Sangs there are? <laughs> And I can, I can attest to that. My, uh, my maiden name is Kim. So uh, J. Kim was you know, pretty bad when it came to name recognition. So, but we are trying. You know, this is why we need uh, you know, other re uh, referees' helps to just get more people into the database. Um, it's just trying to, like we also look at uh, referees' uh, publication record. Obviously, we want that to be pretty good. So um, sometimes the searching can get very cumbersome and uh, but we we keep on trying we hack at it we you know we we try our best and unfortunately this is also the uh, the the referees that were used and I don't know sometimes we just don't get as a good a response um, now, nowadays with email it should not be so much of a problem but the response rate is also not and people move around a lot so it's really easier when you have a very unique name then we can follow you around but sometimes we lose them but this is one thing that we know we want to get better at because this is, you know, the, the distribution in some sense. We want to make sure that we show the diversity, also the international nature of who publishes and reads us. So does that answer your question? Yeah. All right. So in order to thank the referees, we, oh gosh, it must have been about 10 years ago, started giving out these outstanding referee um, it's not really a prize, I guess. Uh, it's a recognition, an award. Um, and you get this little pin that you can wear. Uh, APS fellows get a little pin, and the Oceania ref referees get this little pin. And we choose uh, a bunch. This is supposed to be a lifetime award. So um, we every year we all get together. Each journal gets to choose. It's proportional to the number of uh, ref referrals they have and referees they use. And so these are all the ones that are from Brazil. And of course, Carlos is not here. I would have congratulated, well, I congratulated him last time, so. Um, so Carlos um, got his uh, Outstanding Referee uh, Award in 2017. So everybody sign up to be a referee, and you know, maybe in 10 years you'll get this award, and your name will be up there. So this is only for Brazil. What was that? You didn't ask me the question, no? <laughs> oh, okay. So yeah, I just wanted to, otherwise we have hundreds, so, you know. Um, okay, sorry, that was a little detour, so back to what we do. So here is the geographical distribution of the papers we published. This was what you were talking about, and as you can see, it's 10% here. Um, so. Yeah, our chi the China contingent. But we pu published 2% of Brazilian papers. That's a little bit different from the, uh, the, the graph that Lawrence um, showed before. So as you can see, the majority, uh, the US and Canada has been the second for a long time, I think ever since I've worked there, which is 19 years. So Europe has always been the largest contingent of published papers. This is in tw these are publications in 2017. So, um, so we are growing. There's always, you know, there are lots of papers that come in, and I think 40,000 in 2018 we are on track to get 40,000 submissions. And of those, uh, over 20,000 will be published. Of course, you know, we're in October right now. That's kind of where we're we're gearing towards. 
So that means every three minutes a new submission is received. So we're kind of busy. So when I get an, uh, an email from an from a author that's a, who says, um, you got my referee report yesterday. Why don't I have it? You should really send me the referee report now. It's like, well, we also have a lot of other things to do. But we do our, do our best to try and be as fast as possible. So this is another slide that Lars has already shown. I just wanted to show it how the, the, uh, the distribution of the different uh, um, journals are. As Lawrence already mentioned, PRB is the, is the largest. And uh, PR Applied is right here. And RMP is the, uh, the smallest one. Uh, the smallest journal we have. So this is just kind of a summary of um, all the uh, important data, I guess. Um, in 2017, we published almost, not quite, 20,000 uh, articles, the largest being B and the smallest being RMP. Uh, the highest impact factor, um, tomorrow, uh, Hendrik is going to talk about um, uh, impact factor a little bit. Uh, everybody know what the impact factor is? Yes? No? Yes? No? We, it, it will get talked about. I just wanted to, you to know what, what it is. If you have just an idea of what, the, what it is, that's fine. Um, we have three gold open access journals, which means that um, all the articles are open access because the other journals are what we call green open access, so you can pay money to make, uh, the author pays to make it open access, but not all the uh, uh, papers are open access, so that's called green open access. And 5.1% uh, of uh, PR papers are published in gold open access journals. This is also partly because we are now part of scope three. If you are a, a CERN person, this is what uh, PRD, a large part of their uh, portfolio has become open access because it's being funded differently. So that number has increased and will increase quite a bit. So now that I've done the the all the journals things, now I get to do uh, say something about my own. Um, physical Review Applied, as I said, we started in 2014, and we are dedicated to bridging physics, uh, engineering, industry, and other disciplines together. We see ourselves as an interdisciplinary journal. Uh, when people ask me, what do I publish? I like to say, well, everything starting from what is too applied for B, so where B stops, and all the way where IEEE starts. Uh, is basically our room of where we like to, where we would like to capture as, as many uh, papers, as good papers as possible. So our goal is to publish high quality papers in applied physics using constructive, thorough, and speedy review process. I feel like I'm spitting into this. Can everybody understand me? Yeah? Okay. All right. It's just in my head then. Okay. So <laughs> this is another way. I, I kind of like this graph because it shows. Uh, how, when and how everything was, uh, all the journals were started. Um, we are the first, as I mentioned before, we are the first subscription-based journal to be started since the 50s where PRL was started. All of these were just split. And since then, um, it, took, it took us a while to, d to do this, but since then we've already have two more uh, journals, and who knows, maybe we'll be publishing more soon. So how does PR Applied fit into the family of journals? Uh, before PR Applied, PRB was publishing, as I said, I used to be a PRB editor. Uh, we published a lot of the applied physics papers. We rejected a lot of them, but we also published some of them. PRL publishes some. Um, and so it was decided, you know, surveys were done and, you know, lots of uh, data was taken as, uh, as Lawrence sh showed about PRM, uh, PR materials, excuse me. And so it was decided that we should start a, a, an applied physics journal. But since um, the physical review family was supposed to be a fundamental physics uh, uh, journals, uh, it was decided that we should augment it with this. So we are a little different from the other physical review journals in that we have research articles, not regular articles. We have letters, which is supposed to be at the level of a letter. So we don't have rapid communications. And then we also have review articles. And um, the only other journal that also has review articles is actually physical review materials. So that's where we fit in in the big picture. This is the staff. There's uh, S Steve is our uh, Lawrence. And um, he is at the University of Michigan. There's me. And this is my colleague, Matt. And he also used to be a PRB person. 
as uh, Lawrence had mentioned before. We have currently we have 23 editorial board members in various subject areas. Um, we cover a lot, as you can see, condensed matter physics, optics, soft matter, biological physics, and so on. Uh, but we're in the process, we're kind of right in the middle right now of trying to look for more. And we also have a number of helpers from other journals because we have grown immensely over the last um, two or so years. And so an, uh, Juan Jose from PRE and uh, Paul Schneiders from PRB, they are kind enough to help us whenever they can. And it's much appreciated. <laughs> So, what do we want? This is the publication criteria for all the physical review journals. So, it is the policy of the American Physical Society that the physical review accepts publication uh, for a publication those manuscripts that are significantly that significantly advance physics and have been found to be scientific, scientifically sound, important to the field, and in satisfactory form. This is for all of uh, physical review. We have an additional criteria. Um, we have kind of modified the new and significant physics a little bit because, I mean, obviously we are an applied physics journal. So if we say that you can, it, a paper does have to, it has to have physics in it, but if it is, if you can get, gain fresh insight from or about physics in your paper, that would be sufficient. It doesn't have to be new per se. It has to have clear ties to concrete applications. It does not mean that I'm, I'm looking for a device on my table that, you know, this is on my desk that it's going to work, uh, that you just are moving towards uh, an application. It has to be significant and forward-looking and interesting to a variety of readers. We, because we wanted to be a little bit interdisciplinary, um, we felt that it would, be, it would be better if the papers were written um, in a more... Uh, for, ready for a wider audience. I don't want to say broad interest because that's a PRL thing. Um, that's not what we're looking for. Uh, just so that more, you know, it would be written in so that it's understandable to a larger group of people. So, the types of paper that we publish. As you can tell here, mo a lot, and one could, I mean, this is no, uh, I guess it's not surprising, a lot of these uh, subject areas um, are uh, condensed matter so sorts of areas. Um, the other, which is the biggest chunk, um, we have a lot of, uh, different um, gradations. I should say something about these uh, uh, areas. Um, when we started, um, PRX had these uh, subject areas that, they, that when you submit a paper, you get to click on, and you get to uh, pick three. And these were already kind of predetermined, and so we just took that on. So when you, if you were to sub uh, submit a PR applied paper, you have the opportunity to pick uh, three of these different um, subject areas, what we call markers. And um, <laughs> under other here, we have me medical physics, biological physics, photonics, uh, quantum physics, soft matter, and the list goes on. It's a, it's a pretty long list. So this was already shown by Lawrence. Um, as you can tell, you know, we, again, it's really a lot of... Um, some uh, device-oriented, but also uh, mostly condensed matter type stuff, which is not surprising. But uh, we do have some uh, biological stuff. I know there's somewhere there's cell in there and uh, um, um, you know, qu quantum computation, all of these things also go into that little word bubble. Okay, this is the uh, receipts and published papers. And um, so we started in 2014. And as you can tell, we've kind of, it started off with a lot of papers and then we, uh, and, but there were a lot of unsuitable papers, as you can tell from the, the number of uh, receipts and, and publication being so different. And then we kind of got to a steady state and then suddenly we took off. And the reason why we took off was that was where the first impact factor came out. And, you know, I kind of have a love-hate relationship with this number because it's so flawed, it's just not a good number to judge a journal or a paper. I mean, that's, it's, but this is what people asked. If I had, you know, a dollar, a quarter every time somebody asked me, uh, what is your impact factor, I would be retired now. I'd probably come to Natal and retire because, you know, it was just constant. Or if, when I said I didn't know, it would be, well, what do you think it's going to be? 
And I'm like, but I'm not engineering a journal to have a particular impact factor. That wasn't the point. But it's very hard to <laughs> sell that. Um, but as you can tell, it does make a difference, for better, for worse. So I don't like the number, but I, ha I can only ignore it at my own peril. And as I said, uh, Henrik is going to talk a lot more about impact factor, so I'm going to leave it at that. Percentages. Somebody say something? Okay. Percentages papers rejected without external review. Lawrence also mentioned that with the Rware. Um, we are the green box, oh, the green box, sorry, gray box here. And uh, as I said in the beginning, it seems like, it seems to me that uh, there are a lot of people out there that they have these manuscripts somewhere in the desk drawer. And every time a new journal, uh, you know, has called for papers, they send it in. Because we had a lot of papers that were really not even applied physics that came in. I don't quite know why, but um, so we rejected a lot without external review in the beginning. But now we're kind of in the, in the midst of, now that we've been around for four and a half years, we're kind of missed in, in with everybody else. Uh, about 25% is what we have. This is also what PRB has, this is the red box here. So we're around um, that, and this, this orange box is PRX, and they are the, um, the more exclusive, so to say, more important uh, papers. So um, they have a much higher a rejection without external review rate. Um, percentage of papers that end up being accepted. So as you can see, again, uh, most of the journals, um, this is uh, PRC. They have the highest uh, um, acceptance rate. That's PRD, and the rest of us are somewhere between uh, 60 and, uh, well, this, this data point is really, all of these data points are not so good because uh, it's not 2018 yet, so we don't quite know, uh, 2019 yet, so we don't know what 2018 is going to do, so they're more the projected. But we're around 50 to uh, 60 in that range, all the PR journals. And, of course, we have... Um, this is PRL, and that's PRX. And as you can tell, PRX has a very, very low acceptance rate. So these are, I, we have not had a lot of papers from Brazil, so these are the papers that I uh, um, picked out that we have. So I'm hoping that more people will get to know us and, and will uh, submit to us. So where are we now? So the, all the, the impact factor. It's 4.782. And yes, it's silly that it's th to s three significant figures after the, but this is how we're supposed to quote it. We cannot say uh, 4.8, that's not allowed. Um, so the number of papers we published in 2017, oops, sorry. In 2017 was 418. Four um, and so far, in, uh, at the end of September, we had 419 papers. So we are projected to go up to about 600. So we have been growing over, over the past few years. And then we have these things called editor suggestions that we uh, pick. These are editors, um, all the PR applied editors uh, sit together and figure out, uh, well, we feel that this paper is interesting, important, um, just worthy of mention, and those get uh, picked. Uh, it's about 10%, a little bit less. So I'll show you an editor suggestion a little bit later. Um, but the one thing that we are different from the other physical review journals is that all our papers are accompanied by a teaser and a key image. Like all the others, though, we have almost all the other journals have editor suggestions. And they also, every paper is considered by the editors of physics for them to um, uh, pick to uh, write in their online journal. So this is what a teaser, that's the uh, key image, and this is what a teaser is like. Our, our teaser is a little longer. Um, the whole point, again, because we are interdisciplinary in nature, we want people to be able to read it and have a good idea of, of what the paper is about. So as I said, every, uh, every paper is considered for highlighting, and what happens is that if you get a highlight, uh, you get to go on our web page on the front home page and not underneath just recent. And, um, and then you get this little gray box so that people reading the PDF knows that your paper was uh, selected for an editor suggestion. And physics is the same sort of thing. Here are the, um, the, the papers that were highlighted 
um, in physics in 2018. There's more, there are just four that I, the four of the mo most recent ones that I picked out. And just to give you also an idea of what kind of papers we publish, um, it's not representative, but it gives you sort of a, a static kind of view. So here again, you get this little banner, and uh, you can see that it was, uh, um, it was featured in physics. So these are some of the um, outlets then that uh, our papers have been uh, covered in. Um, these are not our doing. It just happens, and we just make a note of it. And, and uh, I mean, it's not that surprising, I guess, in some of these uh, outlets. So I wanted to, um, in Sao Paulo, we were talking about uh, a little bit about uh, gender and role models. Um, and you know, I'm looking and seeing how many female members of the audience there are. And uh, physics is still a very male-dominated field. Um, so I just thought that I would add this little slide in. Um, Millie Dresselhaus, uh, she was coined the queen of carbon. I don't know how many people know her. She's very well known in the, in the States. Uh, she was one of our inaugural um, board members. Unfortunately, she passed away in 2017. And um, before she passed away, GE had made this, uh, this is an advertising for, uh, on, t on, on TV, so. Millie Dresselhaus stop. Happy birthday, sweetie. Oh, Thank oh, you. Millie. Millie Dresselhaus, babe. We are so glad to have you here. What if we treated great female scientists like they were stars? Photo avec vous. What if Millie Dresselhaus, the first woman to win the National Medal of Science and Engineering, were as famous as any celebrity? Millie Dresselhaus was seen having lunch today. What if we lived in a world like that? We know a place that's already working on it. So she was one of my umbrella models. <laughs> so um, she, when she went to Harvard, uh, she actually had to take an exam in a different room because women were not allowed in the room where they were taking the exam. So um, yeah, we've come a long way, but we still have a long way to go. Uh, she was also given the uh, Medal of Freedom. That's the highest honor that can be bestowed by the president. Um, and this is one of the quotes that I, I I really like, follow your interests, get the best available education and training, set your sights high, be persistent, be flexible, keep your options open, accept help when offered, and be prepared to help others. So there are role models out there, everybody, so just you know, be persistent and keep at it. Um, because she passed away, we decided that we were going to do a co collection in memory of her. So we had the two guest editors, um, Dr. Endo and Dr. Tomanek um, to put together a group of authors. They submitted papers, and um, we started with the guest editorial and the first four papers on February the 20th, 2018, which was her the anniversary of her passing. And we've been publishing papers throughout the year, and the collection will now close a day bef um, after her birthday with another guest editorial. So that's about it as far as where we are, so now where we are going. So we want to keep on increasing the size of the journal uh, by attracting good submissions in traditional applied physics areas. And we've also identified three focus areas that we want to increase our coverage on, and these are quantum inf information processing and technology, energy and materials and devices, and biomedical physics and engineering. So that's kind of, on, um, so it's like a, a parallel track that we're trying to do. Uh, we're not trying to grow like to the size of PRB or anything like that. Um, I mean, I, I've, I've said that if we get to, you know, 1, 1,200 papers, uh, that's when we'll have to reassess and see how much bigger we should get or shouldn't get. And of course, it's not all up to me or uh, Steve. It's all in c collaboration with the higher ups of the uh, of uh, physical review and the APS. So before I end, 
I have a few more minutes. I just wanted to say a few words about physics because there's also some undergraduate uh, students here. Uh, has anybody heard of physics? Do you? No, I mean, not physics as in physics, but physics, the, um, the magazine, the website. It's really a website. Um, they have, uh, they go through all of our uh, accepted papers, and the editors of physics, they choose papers to highlight. And there are three kinds of highlights that they do. They do a few viewpoints, which are commentaries on papers written by prominent experts in the field, and they're act written by active researchers for an audience with a college-level background in physics. Um, and then their focus stories, which are explanation of research papers geared towards students and non-experts. They're written by journalists for an audience with a general interest in physics. And then there are these synopses, which are brief uh, news summaries about papers written by an editor or journalist for an audience with a college-level background in physics. So take a look. You know, this is the website. Um, they have interesting little articles. Even if you're not a physics major, you can go and see what, uh, what's, what's interesting what kind of interesting papers that we're publishing. Um, so here the, here's the website. Um, they try to be as, uh, as broad as possible, so they try, do try to uh, highlight different areas of physics. Like here we have biological physics, we have photonics here, and magnetism. And then we also set out um, what they call these tip sheets, um, which is, goes out to journalists. So. Uh, this is also partly how, you know, New York Times gets wind of a certain paper that's being published. Um, so they can also put you on there, and you might get into the New York Times or Washington Post, you know. <laughs> so that was about it, and so thank you. And send us your work, and uh, I'm open for any questions. Thank you, Julie. Are there questions? I actually have a curiosity. Uh, I wanted to ask if you ever mm, discussed face to face with one of the authors that actually published in uh, Physical Review Applied, mm -hmm. and uh, uh, if you had the impression that uh, uh, the expectations that he had about the Physical Review Applied were the ones that you also, as an editor, have about your journal. I'm telling that because. Uh, of course, this is one of the newest uh, ver uh, journals mm -hmm. in physical review. And of course, probably even for authors, it's a bit more difficult to try to understand what is, what is the level or even the field that you are mentioning, compared, for example, to PRB or to physical review A and the other journals. Um, yeah, as I said, it, uh, if it's a condensed matter person, I like to say that you know we cover the area right where physical review B ends and I tr IEEE begins. Um, of course, we have a competitor uh, who's been around for a long, long time, uh, Applied Physics Letters and Journal of Applied, Applied Physics. Um, they're not our publication because I got asked that a lot. Why is APS starting another Applied Physics Journal? You already have APL and JAP. It's not an APS journal. It's not a physical review journal. So um, there's a lot of, I, unfortunately, because of the the competition with tenure positions and grants and all of that, um, they do gravitate towards journals that have a higher impact factor. So um, AP, APL is, and I, I actually had, I, I had this discussion before um, Physical Review Apply had an impact factor, and somebody said to me, well, if you have a higher impact factor than APL, then I'll submit to you. So this is kind of where people peg, I mean, you can engineer a journal to have a high impact factor. That's never what, what APS has done and never will do because we don't believe in that. Um, it's really up to the community. And so we landed where we landed because of, of um, I mean, obviously, we use the same referees. We tell them that we want to be around the same. The research article should be around the same as our, our sister journals. I mean, there's, there are differences, obviously, and impact factor is... Um, and Rick will tell you, it's very, very dependent. The last time I did this uh, workshop, um, Philip Greenland is from the medical community, and uh, he was talking about impact factors of 20. They're like, you know, no, the medical journals, nobody looks at you until you're 20. And I'm hyperventilating thinking 20. I mean, that's, that's, that's nuts, but 
it, it's really very, very subject area dependent. Um, so it's really, we're run by the community. We, we are all physicists. We, um, the people who s send their stuff to us are physicists. We try to serve the community as best we can. So it's really, in the end, what we get and um, you know, what the community wants to read. But it's obvious that uh, you know, the impact factor is going to have a lot to do with it. So whether I like it or not, I mean, that graph, I think, shows pretty much you know, where it is, so. Other questions? I actually have another curiosity, but this is more related to, uh, I, I mean, actually not a curiosity, but I would like to ask you if you can give some advice to our Brazilian colleagues, as we have seen the situation, as Lawrence was uh, showing today, is not really excellent in Brazil. I, I honestly, it came as a sort of surprise to me. I'm part of the Brazilian community. Mm -hmm. If you have some piece of advice related to uh, to your specific journal and to, I mean, to get some help, uh, specific help uh, on how to publish in uh, Physical Review Applied well, for I Brazilians. I, I think that it's, it's not just for Brazilians, it's for a lot of people who don't speak English as their first language. I mean, this is why we go around and we do do, do the tutorials and we try to, uh, because the writing is, is very important and um, it's how you present your work. It's the results. Yes, you've worked hard, your results may be great, but if you can't put it down on paper uh, or you don't quite know how to present your work, it's not going to, because, it, and we'll talk about it at the tutorial, it goes through several uh, screening f phases. And we, as the editors, when we first get the paper, we need to understand what it is. Most of us, as I say, we, we're all, we all have, our, uh, have PhDs now. For example, Physical Review Applied only has uh, two in-house editors, so we obviously aren't experts in all the field. Uh, PhysRef B is a little different. They, they're more, more people, so they can be more specific. But, you know, you can tell when something's a good paper and something is not. And obviously, if I don't know something about it, I'll go and ask a colleague. That's the wonderful thing about being in that office is that I, I know people that I can ask, at least have a rough idea of what, um, you know, of whether I want to send it out to review. Because you have to get through that hurdle. Without getting that through that hurdle, you're not going to. And then, of course, it's the next hurdle is the referees. Again, if you can't p present your work in the way, uh, in the best sort of way, in the best light, you know, it's going to be more difficult. So I, I think it's, it's a matter of um, just working on it. And it's not just a Brazilian problem. It's, you know, if you see most of the, I mean, we people also talk about bias. Are we biased against, you know, certain uh, uh, countries? I mean, I hear that from China, you know, it really, it really isn't, I mean, I would be, I, I can't sit here and say, oh, I'm not biased at all, you know, because that would be lying. You know, everybody has some bias, but we are very aware of it and we try to work against it, if that makes any sense. So it's really not the bias on the science um, that is causing this. It's whatever, um, what is produced. And also, when you write a paper, I know that this whole publish or perish thing comes in. Um, write a paper that has substance because a lot of people, what they start doing is they start to, uh, we call them publons, you know, the least publishable unit. And, um, and they think that getting a series of papers like that, you know, you have more publications and that's going to look good on your CV, uh, that, that might backfire. So, you know, if you have a good result, you know, write it up, send it in, but ask yourself, is this really you know, where I want to stop, or should I do, a, you know, this one more experiment and run, or run this simulation to make it, you know, uh, a better paper? I hope that answers the question. I think you, you raised a very good point. Uh, so this was also discussed in Sao Paulo. I think should, this should be discussed more either later or uh, tomorrow. Yeah. It's a very good point. Uh, thank you, Julie. We have another question. Do your journal accept papers on applied, applied mathematical physics? Yes, we do. We do. Now you have to, of course, you know, make sure. That's one of the things that we do find that we do a lot of. Also because a lot of our audience is from the fundamental physics side and they've moved into the applied field is that um, 
just make sure that the connection to the application is there, whatever it, you're looking at, so that we have a better picture. And again, we'll talk about this at the tutorial of how you, how you would you know, uh, make it clear to us why we need to consider your paper, basically. Thank you. Are there further questions? Okay, if not, let's thank uh, Julie for a great talk.